Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Wednesday, July the 3rd. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. If you notice a slight, subtle change to my surroundings, a more spacious change to my surroundings, ding ding, you're right, I'm in a different vehicle today, I'm in my family van, nothing screams dad more than a Honda Odyssey, and that's what I'm in, my car, my Honda Civic is in the shop right now. So enjoy the new surroundings. It only lasts for a day, at least as long as my car's done in a day. Okay, today I want to talk about Brock Besser. I want to talk about the fact that we still need to sign him to a contract. I'm not worried at all. In fact, I've heard people say, more, or more than one people say, that they've already agreed on terms. They are just waiting to announce it later. Um, but they've agreed on terms so Jim Banning knows what he has to work with when it comes to salary cap and free agency and all that. So that's one rumor, or, uh, one, one thing I've heard. And leave a comment below if you've heard that as well from either sources or friends or friends of sources or whatever, sources of friends, whatever it is. Um, like I said, I've heard from a couple of people that they've already agreed on a deal or at least agreed on a deal in principle. They simply haven't announced it yet. That would be nice if that was true, but I'm not worried. Bo Horvat, not the same type of player, but still a very important player. Horvat didn't sign his, his second contract until early September. So we're only in early July. So maybe we have a few weeks to wait this out. So that's the first thing is, do you actually think Besser has already signed his contract or is that wishful thinking? Leave a comment below. More importantly, I want to talk about predicting what Brock Besser is going to get in his new contract. And I did a video way back in August, so 11 months ago, predicting $7 million for seven years, a $49 million contract. And at that time, I said, you know, he's probably going to be a tiny bit more valuable, at least in, in management's eyes, than, than Bo Horvat. And Horvat, a couple of years ago, signed that six-year, $5.5 million. So maybe we go six or seven years at $7 million. That's what I predicted way back in August. And I'm still going to hold true to that, although I'm starting to think that the term might be a bit shorter than seven years. So let's talk about that, if that's indeed the case. We saw Sebastian Ajo, the Carolina Hurricanes, match that ill-fated offer sheet attempt by the Montreal Canadiens. So four years for, no, sorry, five years for Ajo at just over $8 million a year, basically 8.45. So I don't think Best is going to make 8.45, but you look at a five-year deal as opposed to a seven-year deal. So that's what Ajo is getting. Then Timo Meyer uh, was just signed by the Sharks for six, uh, four years, excuse me, $24 million. So again, that's four years, $6 million a year, $24 million over those four years. So again, not a six or seven year contract, but a, a four year contract. So we're seeing these four, five year contracts. Austin Matthews signed a five year contract a couple years ago. So that's maybe the way we're trending and l not so much the six or seven year contract. Even Tyler Myers, a different situation. He's a UFA, but Tyler Myers um, signed a five year as opposed to six or seven years. So we're starting to see more of these four or five year contracts. The implication of this is if Besser signed, for instance, a four year contract, then at the end of that contract, he will still be an RFA. He won't be 27 yet, and he won't have had whatever amount of years playing in the league, 9 or 10, whatever the threshold is. So he will still be an RFA. So the implication of that is whatever the final year of his contract is when it comes to salary, that's going to be the basis for a qualifying offer. And of course, the Canucks and the Bester don't have to sign a qualifying offer. I mean, they don't have to uh, you know, accept the qualifying offer usually teams and players will negotiate a contract outside of that qualifying offer, as we've talked about, but it's a way to retain negotiating rights. But that's one a small implication is that whatever the last year of the contract, if it's only four or five years, is that's going to be the basis of the next qualifying offer because Besser will, Besser will still be an RFA. However, you go six or seven years, then Besser becomes a UFA at the end of that. So there's, you know, pros and cons to that, of course, then he can go anywhere you want, but you, you can also control that you, you can lock him up for a little bit longer. So, whereas if they take a shorter deal, they can still build up their value and the way the salaries are going, maybe uh, players want to take a shorter deal because then they can negotiate an even better contract before they get to UFA. So maybe you go four year, four year, or five year, three year, or, or five year, two year, whatever it may be. So that's, uh, that's another way of looking at it. As, but let's talk about the numbers itself. Timo Meyer has very, very similar numbers to Besser. In fact, on a points per game basis, they're basically the same stat, you know, stat line. So $6 million a year for Meyer. I think the Canucks will argue that Besser is more valuable to the Canucks than Meyer is to the Sharks, given uh, all the talent that the Sharks have, and more importantly, for the Canucks, and more appropriately, how uh, Besser was a, a Calder Trophy finalist, how he's arguably our, our second most skilled forward behind Elias Pettersson. So for all these reasons, you could see Besser asking for six and a half, seven million $7 million a year, which is fine. The Canucks will have that 
in their cap, you know, they still got to sign uh, Godobin and Levo and Raffer uh, Rafferty and Tevez, but the Canucks can also still make some moves to get themselves under the cap. So I, I don't see money being the issue. I think it's going to be more of the term. Money, I think it's going to be no more than $7 million, although Aho got 8.45. Like I said, uh, he's not as good as Aho, but he is bit better than Timo Meyer, who got $6 million. So $7 million seems to be a, about a proper number. That's the number I keep hearing. I think the terms give you the most, the most interesting thing is do you think Brock Besser is going to go with a shorter one, a, four, a three, four, or five-year versus a longer one, six or seven, depending where you put that threshold of short versus long. But I think you know, you know four and five is what we were seeing. Six and seven would be ideal if you believe in a long-term contract locking him in. And some might even say Besser hasn't proven himself yet. He had one really good season, actually two really good seasons, his rookie year and then last year, of course. Um, but, you know, he's had injuries in both seasons. So maybe you're not absolutely sold on him as a durable 80, 82 you know, game a season player. I am. I'm not worried about that. The One of them, the back injury is a fluke. And then, you know, because of, he got it to a slow start, um, a, a slow start this season because of the ramifications of his back injury. So I love Besser. Uh, he's one of our best players, obviously. He's one of my favorite players. And I, I think we got to pay the man what he's worth. And to me, you know, I still think it's to be $7 million. But maybe, uh, I guess my one shift is it might not be your six or seven year deal. Maybe it's four or five. And then if it's four or five instead of six or seven, does that mean the dollar amount should come down a little bit? Or does that mean it goes up a little bit because you're signing him to a shorter term and then he's, you still retain his rights basically as an RFA um, at the end of this next contract if it's only four or five years? So many, many things to think about. If I was pressed to make a prediction, I say he's going to go seven to seven and a half now on a shorter deal, four or five years as opposed to seven at seven but seven at seven would be great for the Canucks I think it'd still be good for Besser you know what's half a million when we're talking about seven million but uh, you know it gives the, both the Canucks and the player uh, long-term range and long-term security Canucks fans let me know what you think do you think it's gonna be shorter for three four five years do you think it's gonna be longer six or seven years what dollar amount are we looking at am I out to lunch or a seven million about what we're, we're thinking about paying him obviously it'll make him the highest paid player ahead of Edler and Tyler Myers at six million dollars in each, uh, six million dollars each, and Erickson actually. So Erickson, uh, Myers, and they're all making six mil. Then you got Horvat at five five, and JT Miller at five point two five. Those are kind of like the the big five when it comes to our salaries. And Besser will obviously top those guys. Canucks, I almost screwed up. Canucks fans, leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply. Tell me what you think. What's your best prediction of Besser's new contract? And both in ter terms of term and in terms of money. Are you worried at all that he's not going to get signed here? I'm not, but maybe you are. I'd love to hear those comments as well. I'll do my best to read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. God bless. Go Canucks, go.